Hey guys, I hope you had a good new year, and I'm sorry that I haven't posted in a while. I just have been kind of lazy. So today, I'm going to talk about Halloween. I just say Halloween, but the 1979 version. I'm pretty sure it came out in 1979. And a lot of y'all probably know it as one of the movies along with Alien and the Thing to truly usher in a different era of horror movies. Like the Halloween as one of the first movies to effectively use music to really terrify audience and they really made a masterpiece of that movie. Just um the special effects they had none of them really needed green screen, anything like that because I think sometimes that takes away the true feeling of it possibly being real and yeah, it's basically about I don't know if I should tell y'all the beginning of the movie it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty important, but I'll just give you a gist of it because I really want you to watch it. It's about this guy who escapes from a mental hospital and he specifically goes after young girls on a Halloween night. Basically, it's just about their survival, about their life. As high schoolers, one of them's babysitter. Just, yeah. You know, start typical horror movie where characters get killed one by one. So there's that last man or woman who either dies or makes it to see the second film. I mean, not to see it, but to be in the second film, and then they go for fresh hell over and over again. But yeah, it. I watched it. I watched it um, when I was younger, y'all. And oh boy, was I terrified. I remember being maybe 10 years old at the time. Probably a little bit older, I can't remember. I was drifting off to sleep when I heard this heavy breathing that sounded like Michael Myers' voice right over my bed. You know, like the, have you seen the movie? You'll know what I'm talking about, like the labored breathing that he has throughout the film. It just sounded so close, and I was really freaked out. Of course, I'm still here. <laughs> Nothing happened, but still, it was... Yeah. You know, a horror movie's good when it really dominates your dreams, or you think that the main villain is standing right over your bed. It was very unsettling. It didn't need any supernatural elements. It was just about this crazy guy who goes around killing people. And any man or woman, I'm mean, not any man or woman, but it just, if you look at the news, especially the shit that happened last year, just things like that can happen. Also, it's less likely for a serial killer to be running around stuff. There's still cases of it, which makes it all more terrifying. And what also makes it scary is that he doesn't talk throughout the whole movie. He just silently stalks his prey, even in the daytime, especially in the daytime. At night, he silently makes his way to their houses, which, of course, they utilize the night scenes like perfectly. 
because it's just in our primal nature to be scared of the dark. We don't know what's going to come out of the shadows, what can come up to our doorstep and break into our house. It's just a fear of the unknown. At least in the daytime, obviously, you can see if someone's coming at you, but it gives us a whole new feel to it whenever the sun goes down. Well, I have the stars and moon, of course, the lights and stuff, but just the thought of being in a house alone at night. Especially if you hear on the news that the killer is on the loose. I can't imagine how terrifying that must be because I've never here, like where I live, I wasn't really been a case like that in good many years. But if y'all haven't seen it, you guys should really watch it. Like, oh my gosh. I remember this one scene where I think the main protagonist was walking through, you know, kind of like that doorway without a door, just this arch and you walk through it. Basically, when she was getting close to her side, the spy fucking swung down at her. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. That's why she jumped back. Like, they didn't really need to use gore in that movie. Just the music, like I said, the music that were just perfectly implemented into the whole film. Like, they knew when to ramp up the suspense. They knew when to keep things nice and quiet. They knew how to keep you on the edge of your seats, wondering what Michael Myers would do next. It was, and then the ending, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but the ending, whoo, the ending was pretty scary. Because basically, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's just, Michael Myers is I mean, I don't know if he's hum I don't think he's even human. I mean he could be about the same time. He could be symbolism of just evil. I'm not really I'm not really sure. Maybe he could just maybe there's not really any symbolism behind it. Maybe they just went with the premise of a guy just running around killing people. But it was a really well done movie. The actors and actresses at the time, I mean, that was pretty good. You could really see the emotion and feel as scared as they were. And a good movie, especially a good horror movie, like, puts you right alongside the protagonists as they're going through each step, like, towards the basement or coming face to face with the main villain itself especially one of the most uh like scary horror films i've watched is one where the person is completely alone so it feels like it's just you if you're watching it by yourself it just you it feels like it's just you and that person I feel like you're the sole people who are alive in that house that woods, that's one of the scariest one, which the ones I'm more reluctant to watch are where it starts off as protagonists being all alone in this really scary haunted place or some shit like that. But when there's a group, or when the killer is picking up people one by one, you can, a good horror movie, like I said, really makes you feel what the characters are feeling. Even though it's obviously fake, it makes you kind of relate to a character on some level to really believe that this is actually happening, to believe that you're right there alongside them and seeing the horrors that they're seeing and trying to survive. And of course, you know it's fake, but at the same time, you just... It's uncanny sometimes that maybe can make you feel like you're right there on their side of the screen, not just watching from your bed, couch, and 
Hollywood is one of those movies where you really feel like you're right beside those characters. And, you know, you feel the fear, like I just says, like perfectly portrayed that feeling of terror and dread. But yeah, if you guys haven't watched it, like I said, you really should watch it. Maybe not, if you have kids and you're watching this, maybe don't show it to them unless they're a little older, because I watched it when I was a little younger. Probably should have seen it when I was a little older, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go give this big like or dislike. I know that's kind of weird to say that, and yeah, my outfit doesn't match, but it's... A little past my bedtime. Not really, but I'm about to go to bed. So, yeah. I don't get fucked with this as much. So, I'm gonna go. No, I say that, but I always like going a little rant or whatever. Okay, I'll see you guys either this Friday or next Monday. I know I should. I, mean, I didn't post yesterday. I mean, I know I've been slacking off, but yeah. I will see you guys hopefully then. Bye.